real feminist. I look across the raging war and feel the steady beating of my heart. I'm rushing on my nose, she's looking sunny. Yeah, I'm a foodie, what I'll stick with. Hello everyone, it's your girl, Columbia. How are you? I'm fine. Let's get into it. This is a response video to a Broadly video. Now, Broadly is a more female-focused and a sort of feminist-focused subsidiary of Vice. Uh, the video is actually an interview with radical feminist and author Virginie Dupont, uh, titled Virginie Dupont on Killing Rapists. Now, I'm actually only responding to a portion of this video, and in particular, I'm responding to some comments made by the interviewer, Lauren Euler. If it's not Euler, forgive me, my mispronunciation, it happens, my dear. I would like to encourage you to go out and watch the entire video. I'm fascinated by Virginie's ideas, and I really can't wait to read a copy of The King Kong Theory. Now, I just want to be clear before I start, just because I disagree or agree with a few statements doesn't mean I'm wholly in the bag for someone and just be or that I hate them. Online, we tend to have an RT equals full endorsement of everything everyone's ever said or done sort of viewpoint, and that's not where I'm coming from. This is just a disagreement. There you go. So let's talk about the subject at hand, shall we? After discussing Virginie's early life and books, they begin to discuss feminism, particularly Beyonce's 2015 BMA perf performance, and how that has affected the discourse surrounding feminism. Even her views on contemporary American feminism are hopeful. It's really interesting, for example, for us to follow all the discussions in America about black feminism, around Beyonce, for example, that we don't have here. I've never saw it before, a superstar uh, wanting to say she's feminist. Mm -hmm. It never happened before in my point of view. You could see some empowering uh, stuff in Madala, but she would never say I'm feminist when she was young and super powerful, not straight away, because it was so pro-feminist. And now what Beyonce do, in my opinion, is she entitled many young people to think feminist is not an insult. To Virginie's point, feminism continues to be associated with man-hating and pushy, bitchy women who are ignorant about their own cause. All these weak men just want to have sex with women all hopped up on autonomy, those goddamn cucks. I'd like my woman to do exactly what I tell her to do. Beyonce engaging with feminism as a positive thing can serve to bring feminist ideas to people who hadn't previously engaged with them or who don't consider themselves feminists. Beyonce is using her brand, her celebrity, her global platform to talk about what feminism means to her, and I don't think that can con be considered a bad thing necessarily. What do you think about Beyonce? I think it's interesting that you think she brings complexity to discussions of feminism because I would say it like dilutes conversations. Beyonce is, isn't like the ultimate self-actualized feminist. Beyonce's presence does not distract from conversations about feminism or feminist theory. Her stance brings new perspectives to a movement long maligned for focusing too much on the issues of white women while ignoring everyone else. Throughout my life, feminism wasn't a topic that people talked about. It wasn't until I got to college that I actually got a chance to engage with feminist authors and ideas. She may provoke a person like me who didn't have a lot of contact with feminism to take a gender studies class, to read feminist literature, to engage with feminist communities online and in real life. Whatever the reactions may be, I think that they are preferable to Beyonce staying silent about the matter. So what does self-actualization have to do with being an effective contributor? There are plenty of people in the world who are struggling to fulfill their physiological and safety needs that are contributing to feminism. I'm one doing it right now. To me, you don't have to be at the peak of Maslow's scale before your views on feminism are worthwhile. Lauren's statement smacks of what we call in the black community, black checking, where the authenticity of your blackness is challenged by another. In this case, we can call it fem checking or feminist checking. So my question is, who is the ultimate fully self-actualized feminist? Is she Bell Hooks? Is she Carol Pateman? Is she Mary Wollenstone Croft or Elizabeth Cady Stanton or Sojourn Truth or Betty Friedan? Is she Dr. Winters? Is she Christiosity or Foxy Jazabel? What about Kevin Logan? What about Dick Coughlin? Uh, are any of those people qualified by her scale to talk about feminism? Dr. Winters probably is. 
she certainly isn't me, so should I stop making this video right now? No, but at the same time, if she brings the subject, it's that she feels concerned and that she feels because really Beyonce didn't need to bring feminism. It's more trouble for her than... Uh, and what I thought was interesting was not so Beyonce in herself, but mm -hmm. what she provokes mm -hmm. uh, and reactions, anti-reaction, pro-reactions, discussion, uh, what women are allowed mm -hmm. to express. I think it's really interesting to bring it up because, yeah, we have to think about feminism. I agree with Virginie. Beyonce didn't need to bring up feminism. She could have continued to make albums, tour, perform, do whatever, sign autographs, and never once in her life brought up the subject, okay? There would be no backlash. There'd be no femme checking from people like Annie Lennox and the, and the assholes who roll around with Wendy Williams like fucking Remora on the back of a great white shark. No nothing, okay? The vitriol surrounding feminist movements and ideas is palpable both on the internet and in the 3d world making it risky okay certainly not like saving your buddy from a landmine type risky but risky nonetheless to talk about especially for a high profile figure and i don't like that lauren is diminishing that risk by saying that beyonce's presence dilutes the conversation surrounding feminism i just worry about it as like a thing that people want to put on their t-shirts here's how i interpret that statement there will be people who don't understand what feminism or feminist theory are and think that it's just like a trendy movement that Beyonce is a part of and so they'll want to be a part of it too and these individuals would lack understanding and could potentially dilute the conversation about feminism. Let me use an analogy to sort of say how I feel about that. So in most metropolitan areas, there's some sort of like light rail or tram system. In the San Francisco Bay Area, our light rail system is called BART, like BART Simpson. Imagine when you went to buy a train ticket. Before it printed out, a questionnaire came up on the screen with some semi-technical questions about the train, like how does a BART train derive power? Or what's the maximum speed of a 10-car train? If you don't answer correctly, you don't get a ticket. There are going to be people who are going to want to ride the train and not understand how it works. The most important thing for them is getting from point A to point B, not trying to become an electrical engineer in the process. And in the same vein, there are plenty of Christians who don't understand how Christianity went from a marginalized cult to the world's biggest religion, but that doesn't mean they get kicked out of the congregation. As with any social, political, economic, or religious movement, there are always gonna be people who aren't familiar with or who are less familiar with uh, the history, values, and ideas of a particular movement, but want to be a part of it. My goal would be to educate this sort of pop feminist to provide them with the source material framework and the communities necessary to gain a better understanding of what feminism is, not to be pissy with them for not knowing. For the record, I'm not against people particularly a more academic feminist, having conversations about feminism. I'm not against academic feminists, and I say that meaning that w people who have taken gender studies classes, people who have degrees in gender and women's studies, people who have advanced degrees in, win in gender and women's studies, whatever their concentration may be, I'm not against them having esoteric conversations on the internet about feminism or in real life about feminism. I am not against anyone having conversations with anyone else about feminism. What I am against is the idea of using knowledge as a barrier to entry for feminism, saying that it's about that you have to know a certain amount in order to call yourself a feminist. To me, Lauren's viewpoint excludes people in developing nations, particularly women, whom for whatever reason may not have access to the same materials or K through 12 education as we do in developed nations. In many areas, libraries may be hard to get to, and if you're a working mother with several children to feed, your first feminist concern probably isn't going to be reading the sexual contract. Um, if you're a woman living in a rural area, the most important aspects of feminism are probably going to be the practical ones, being able to obtain an education, being paid the same as a man, getting proper childcare, access to birth control, prosecution of sexual assault, and into rape culture, freedom of association, not the differences in the interpretations of power between liberal feminists and radical feminists. Not to mention that if you're a young woman who doesn't have access to an education, you might not be able to read the materials that would make one a more self-actualized feminist. 
Um, you know, women in rural India, I'm sure, have many perspectives to contribute to Western feminism. Should they be excluded? You know, if some of them who, who may be illiterate or who may not be able to read at grade level, should they be excluded from the conversation? Hell no. If Laura's attitude becomes or is the dominant attitude amongst feminists, then feminism will gain or perpetuate, depending on how you look at it, a reputation for being a snobby, upper-class ideology accessible only to college-educated Western white women. And that's not something I want for feminism, right, or for the feminist movement. I want people who have never been encountered Betty Friedan or Simone de Beauvoir to be able to access feminist communities and voice their opinions. You know, like, and, and that's like... Well, she, uh, to me, it's cool. And the fact that it is trendy just bring more people into discussion, no? Right. I, I no, wouldn't I see mean, the big danger of everybody becoming feminist. To me, it seems like internet is changing a lot of things about feminism because we can't be told anymore that it's not interesting. We can't be told anymore that we are just imag imagining things. I think something will go out, come from mm -hmm. this generation of uh, the web generation. Here are my final words on the matter. The more people exposed to feminism and feminist viewpoints, the better. I don't think that someone's going to roll up and be like, Lady Columbia is a feminist? Well, let me join up with the squad then. There are always going to be people who want to use feminism as a boogeyman, just like there's always going to be people who want to close ranks and decide that only the most learned are allowed to talk about feminism. Beyonce highlighting the term in a positive way isn't going to change that. I think that everyone needs an inciting incident to get them to look deeper into a particular subject. In this case, it might be my video. It might be a Christiosity video or a Tumblr post or a Sargon video. God help you if it's a Sargon video. However people come to feminist ideas, I think that we should take those huddled masses and attempt to educate them. So to that end, I'm providing a list of sources in the description for those who are interested. But that's it for now, guys. You know where to find me, at Miss Megalodon on Twitter. I don't tell people to like, comment, or subscribe. You'll do that of your own volition. Good night, good morning, and good afternoon to you. We're